Over the years, a large number of skeptics and believers alike have experienced startling, unexplained paranormal phenomena at the Alamo. Invariably, some of these events can be summarily dismissed as the product of overactive imaginations, and some have been explained by science itself. But like so many other famous haunted battlefields and forts that have experienced their own incidents of death, murder, and extreme emotional crisis, the Alamo is probably the best known psychic dead zone in the United States. Ghostly tales about the Alamo can be traced all the way back to 1836. Several weeks after the Battle of the Alamo, Santa Ana ordered General Andrade to raise the Alamo and in doing so ensure that nothing was left standing. Like any other military commander holding the rank of general, Andrade delegated this unwholesome task to a trusted subordinate, Colonel Sanchez. Upon the arrival of Colonel Sanchez and his men, all that remained of the old mission was the chapel. Resolute to carry out Santa Ana's demands, Colonel Sanchez instructed his troops to begin tearing down the church. As the details set about preparing to carry out the order, work was abruptly halted when six ghostly monks materialized from the walls of the chapel. The soldiers watched in stunned silence as these, quote, Diablos slowly advanced, waving flaming swords over their heads while all the time issuing a warning in an inhuman screech. Do not touch the walls of the Alamo. Heeding the ghostly advice, Colonel Sanchez and his men retreated with their tails between their legs. When General Andrade heard of Colonel Sanchez's cowardice, he returned to the Alamo himself with troops and a little insurance, a cannon. Andrade instructed his gunners to aim the cannon at the front doors of the chapel, but before it could be prepared to fire, the six ghostly monks reappeared with fiery swords in hand. As the moaning figures approached, the flummox general and his contingent again issued an unnerving warning. The ghosts' moaning voices startled Andrade's horse and the general was unseated. When the general had regained both his composure and the reins of his steed, he was disgusted to see his men fleeing for their lives. Considering the situation, this was something the general should have done, but instead Andrade remounted his horse and turned to look at the Alamo one last time. To his horror, the general watched as a wall of flame erupted from the ground in and around the low barracks. The smoke from the unholy fire then congealed into the form of a large imposing man. In each of the massive figure's hands were balls of fire, which he hurled at the general like an, in, like an avenging angel. General Andrade retreated from the scene, presumably before the fireballs could hit their mark, and no one has dared harm the sacred site since. Folks at the time believed that the larger-than-life spirit was an amalgamation of the spectral energy of all the dead Alamo defenders that when combined, it created the mission's menacing protector. Official records and later archaeological excavations conducted at the Alamo seem to contradict the engrossing story of General Andrade's encounter with the six phantom monks. Factual evidence suggests that Andrade successfully leveled many of the walls of the fort and dismantled or burned the wooden palisade that had been erected in front of the church and along the south wall of the compound. Apparently, General Andrade was not as scared by the fiery giant as the previous story suggests. During the late 1800s, the ghostly activity at the Alamo was big news in San Antonio. In 1894, the city of San Antonio pressed the mission into service as a police headquarters and jail. It was not long before prisoners housed in the old barracks started to complain about all kinds of ghostly activity there. 
Several articles printed in the San Antonio Express News in February 1894 and August 1897 seem to confirm that paranormal activity was in fact taking place on a regular basis at the Alamo. The articles detail fanciful tales of a ghostly sentry said to walk from east to west on the roof of the police station. The ghostly manifestations, which included mysterious shadows and moaning sounds, were said to be so prominent that the guards and watchmen refused to patrol the building after hours. This caused quite a stir in City Hall. Many of the councilmen felt that making prisoners sleep with ghosts was cruel and unusual punishment. A short time later, the city of San Antonio abandoned its plans for the Alamo in favor of a jail site that was less haunted. The paranormal incidents reported in 1894 and 1897 seem to unabashedly replay themselves over and over, even today. Several recurring stories tell of a phantom sentry that has been observed walking frantically back and forth across the top of the Alamo. Some witnesses believe the ghostly guard is looking for a means of escape, while others are certain that the specter stands watching over the missing treasure of the Alamo. Stay tuned for Ghosts of the Alamo, Part 6.